Here are the top stories for today, March 30, 2021. President Duterte allows the private sector to import their own supply of COVID-19 vaccines. The government is set to release 23 billion pesos in emergency subsidies for areas under the enhanced community quarantine. Pangasinan bans the entry and exit of travelers to and from the NCR Plus bubble. And about 14.5 million Filipinos with comorbidities will be next in line to receive COVID-19 vaccines. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. First in our news, private firms are now allowed to purchase COVID-19 vaccines. President Rodrigo Duterte says he welcomes the efforts of the private sector since there were limitations in the number of doses that the national government could purchase. I have uh, ordered uh, Secretary Galvez to sign any and all documents that would allow the private sector to import at will. Baske mag uh, kano ilan ang gusto nilang ipasok. Okay sa akin. Tayong gobyerno, ito lang ang nakuha natin natin. Ito lang rin ang binigay. Dito sa Pilipinas, maraming mga negosyante na gustong bumili kasi ibigay nila sa kanilang mga trabante. So that the economy can be open. Sellers of fake COVID-19 vaccines in the country will be punished for their crimes. This is the stern warning of President Rodrigo Duterte for those who will take advantage of the great demand of COVID-19 vaccines. The president said fake vaccines and medicines pose serious health risks. Ito bang nagpapabili ng mga fake, ito nag import na yung... Walang ano, walang source, tapos peke, tapos ang mga tao magpabakuna, magbayad ng mahal dahil nga may bakuna available, hindi na maghintay. I'm just warning you, wag na wag kayong magkamali dito na hirap na ang Pilipino tapos dagdagan mo ng ganitong uh, pamaraan ng hanap buhay. The National Capital Region, Bulacan, Cavite, and Laguna and Rizal remains under the Enhanced Community Quarantine Classification until the 4th of April. President Rodrigo Duterte says the EZQ status is subject to review depending on the number of COVID-19 cases in the area. Santiago City, Isabela is placed under the modified enhanced community quarantine from April 1 to 30, while Quirino Province will be under MECQ from April 1 to 15, 2021. The entire Cordillera Administrative Region or CAR, Cagayan, Isabela, Nueva Vizcaya, and Batangas are placed under the general community quarantine until April 30. Also placed under GCQ are Tacloban City, Iligan City, Davao City and Lanao del Sur. All other areas will be placed under modified general community quarantine. Meanwhile, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the extension of ECQ status in Metro Manila will depend on the number of cases. He appeals to the public to always observe the minimum health protocols. Sa mga nagtatanong naman po kung may extend pa ang ECQ, pinag-iisipan po ito ng mabuti ng inyong IATF. At sa Sabado nga po, Black Saturday, ay meron po kami muling pagpupulong para po isa pinal kung ano nga pong mangyayari. Pero sinabi ko na po ito, no? another week or two weeks of MECQ, yan po ay magiging absolute last resort. Inaasahan po natin na dahil nga po dito sa isang linggong ECQ na nangyari matapos pong isang linggo ng NCR Plus Bubble, kasama po ng mask, hugas, iwas at kasama po yung mainting na code, yung pagbabahay-bahay para naghahanap ng uh, mga meron sintomas at yung pag, mas pinainting pa nating uh, testing and isolation, umaasa po tayo na sana po hindi na kinakailangan mag-ECQ. 
Amid criticisms on the implementation of ECQ in Metro Manila and four nearby provinces, President Rodrigo Duterte said the Philippines is not the only country under a lockdown. He said many countries also had to reimpose lockdowns to curb the spread of COVID-19 and prevent the healthcare systems from collapsing. He admitted that he was grappling with the issue of COVID-19, stressing that it is a problem that continues to stake up most of his time. Ang gobyerno ba natin ang kulang? Ang gobyerno ba natin uh, walang ginawa? Alam mo sa totoo lang, ang naka-lockdown ngayon, naka-lockdown ang uh, the countries of Ukraine, France, Germany, Poland, Italy, more than any other papers or on it's the covid that is taking my time or most of my time looking for ways and uh, uh, kung ano lang nangyayari doon sa labas kung saan tayo makakuha. President Rodrigo Duterte has approved the release of 23 billion peso emergency subsidy to low-income residents of NCR Plus, which is under ECQ. Budget Secretary Wendel Avisado said the funds will be sourced from the remaining unutilized funds under Bayanihan 2, the government's second pandemic stimulus package. He said the distribution of in-kind aid may start during the first week of April. LGUs will be required to provide a list of beneficiaries and submit reports of disbursements and utilization of funds. President Rodrigo Duterte welcomed the arrival of 1 million doses of Sinovac vaccines from China. This is the first batch of the government-procured Sinovac jabs. Vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said that aside from the 1.5 million doses in April, 2 million doses will arrive in May, 4.5 million doses in June, and more every month until the country receives a total of 25 million doses from Sinovac by December. Chinese Ambassador to the Philippines Huang Xilian said the procurement of the vaccines is a highlight of the anti-epidemic cooperation between China and the Philippines. President Duterte personally witnessed the arrival of the jabs. He was accompanied by Senator Christopher Lorenz Bongo and Health Secretary Francisco Duque III. Still to come, elderly dialysis patients receive the COVID-19 vaccine in the city of Manila. Pangasinan bans the entry and exit of travelers to and from the NCR Plus bubble. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ang mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan nito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. COVID-19 vaccination drive continues in Manila and San Juan City. Meanwhile, more nurses are needed at the Pasig City COVID-19 referral facility. The details from Chris Chris Mundo. Elderly dialysis patients in the city of Manila received their first doses of AstraZeneca vaccines. Among those who lined up to receive the vaccine was Tatay Edgar, a 60-year-old dialysis patient at the Gat Andres Bonifacio Memorial Medical Center. Tatay Edgar said he was feeling okay after getting the vaccine. 
The vaccination for the elderly dialysis patients was done at the hospital itself to make it more convenient for the recipients. In San Juan City, the local government is about to complete the vaccination of its healthcare workers and will proceed to the next priority groups under the A2 and A3 categories. These are the senior citizens and persons with comorbidities. Mayor Francis Zamora is urging these beneficiaries to sign up for the vaccination program so they can immediately receive their jabs. The city government is also distributing food packs for their residents. And in Pasig City, the 16-bed temporary facility of the Children's Hospital is now operational. The COVID-19 Referral Center needs more nurses to man their facility. Applicants may submit their resume and professional regulation commission license via email to pcchnso at yahoo.com. The salary will be 2,500 pesos for 12-hour duty. Personal protective equipment and accommodation will be provided. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. Presidential Communications Operations Office Secretary Martin Andanar has tested positive for COVID-19. Andanar himself confirmed that his RT-PCR test yielded a positive result. He also said he is asymptomatic and is now under home quarantine. Andanar last went to Loreto de Nagat Islands last March 22nd for the conduct of the Explain, Explain, Explain information drive on the national COVID-19 vaccination roadmap. Despite testing positive for COVID-19, Andanar said he will continue to work as PCOO chief. He also urged the public not to entertain allegations that he violated travel restrictions. On the other hand, Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte also confirmed that she tested positive for COVID-19, but for the second time in eight months. At the moment, Belmonte said she only has mild symptoms and assured she will continue to perform all her duties. She said her positive COVID-19 result is a sober reminder that everyone should not let their guards down as COVID-19 continues to evolve as a pandemic. Meanwhile, Marawi City Mayor Majul Gandambra announced on Sunday that he tested positive for COVID-19. Gandamra said he was in Manila on March 22nd for a meeting with Task Force Bangun Marawi Chairman Eduardo del Rosario and an official of the local Water Utilities Administration or LUA. Incidentally, he was involved in various activities with the Task Force Bangun Marawi, including the groundbreaking of the site for a halal slaughterhouse on March 25. As of March 29, Marawi City has 15 active cases of COVID-19. The local government of Pangasinan has prohibited non-essential travel of Pangasinenses to the National Capital Region, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, and Rizal. Governor Amado Espino III also said persons from the so-called NCR Plus bubble shall be denied entry into Pangasinan. However, essential travels including but not limited to those by frontline services, government personnel, emergency humanitarian causes, and movement of cargo shall remain unhampered. Espino appealed to all to put their safety first and their families in commemorating the Holy Week. Meanwhile, in South Cotabato, marshals have been deployed in resorts and various tourist destinations as it expects the influx of visitors in the area during the Holy Week break. Governor Reynaldo Tamayo Jr. said this is to ensure the proper enforcement of the preventive measures and protocols against COVID-19. The governor warned that the local government may temporarily close down tourism sites or establishments that will not comply with the minimum health protocols. The entire province remains under Modified General Community Quarantine or MGCQ. Meanwhile, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio has ordered the closure of beaches, beach resorts and inland water resorts in the city from April 1 to 4 as a containment measure against COVID-19. Mayor Sara cited incidents involving beachgoers violating the general community quarantine, which even led to the drowning of several minors. The mayor suggested for people to stay at home and not visit the beach resorts to prevent infection. 
The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, is ready to provide financial assistance to formal and informal sector workers to be affected by the ECQ in the NCR Plus bubble. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III said the department has allocated some 10 billion pesos under the 2021 national budget. Under the COVID-19 Adjustment Measures Program, or CAMP, the affected workers will be provided with one-time cash assistance worth 5,000 pesos by the employers. Informal workers will be provided emergency employment under Tulong Panghanap Buhay sa ating Disadvantaged Displaced Workers, or TUPAD. Bello said the Department of the Interior and Local Government is assigned to train the workers as contact tracers. Meanwhile, Bello said the DOLE has not yet received complaints from workers affected by the ECQ. In our business news, prompt and substantial financing extended by the Philippines' multilateral partners for its COVID-19 vaccination program is seen to help accomplish the government's target of inoculating 70 million Filipinos. The World Bank the Asian Development Bank and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank have extended a total of $1.2 billion for the procurement of safe and effective vaccines. Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III said their swift response to the Philippines' call for support reflects their confidence in the government's capability to effectively implement its COVID-19 response measures. ADB Vice President Ahmed Saeed praised the government's vaccine rollout, saying it has gone well in recent weeks. WB Vice President for East Asia and the Pacific, Victoria Kwakwa, said that they are honored to stand shoulder to shoulder with the Philippines and its partners in moving this effort forward. AIIB Vice President for Investment Operations DJ Pandian said its co-financing with the ADB aligns with its commitment to support its members in responding to the COVID-19 crisis. Up next, about 14.5 million Filipinos with comorbidities will be next in line to receive COVID-19 vaccines. And sports officials ban group trainings for national and professional athletes. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. Ugaliin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Relatives and friends of a slain policeman in Tugigarao City are crying for justice as they tag the New People's Army behind the killing. The plea came after patrolman Joey Cuarteros of Barangay Katagaman, Viejo, was laid to rest on Saturday. J.B. Cuarteros' wife slammed the NPA and urged them to surrender during a tearful address released online. Grieving relatives and supporters came in droves to witness the funeral of Cuarteros and waved placards and signages condemning the NPA rebels. Cuarteros and four others were killed while two were wounded when they were ambushed by suspected NPA rebels in Labo, Camarines Norte on March 19. Their companions Corporal Eric Hermoso and Patrolman Aldrin Aguito were wounded in the incident. 
The Philippine Statistics Authority in Region 9 has registered over 132,000 Zamboanguenos in Step 1 of the Philippine Identification System, or PhilSys, since January. The PSA said Monday the registrants belong to the low-income households in the 34 of the city's 98 barangays. The PSA hired 35 data collectors in Zamboanga City. The house-to-house -house Step 1 registration ends on March 31. Up next is Step 2, which includes the gathering of photographs, iris scan, and fingerprints. Step 3, which is the final step, is the issuance of Filsis number and identification cards. The national ID shall be a valid proof of identity for Filipinos and resident aliens that shall simplify availing of government services, public and private transactions, enrollment in schools, and the opening of bank accounts. Around 14.5 million non-elderly adult Filipinos with certain pre-existing conditions are next in the vaccination priority line after the seniors. Interagency Task Force member Dr. John Wong said, after the inoculation of healthcare workers, the elderly and non-elderly with comorbidities need to be protected against COVID-19. Wong said inoculating persons with comorbidities would relieve the pressure in the health system as the country continues to fight the pandemic. Adults with comorbidities are placed behind senior citizens and healthcare workers in the national COVID-19 vaccination program. Comorbidities include chronic respiratory disease, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, malignancy, diabetes mellitus, obesity, and chronic liver disease. However, while depression is a comorbidity, Wong noted that studies have not shown that depression increases the risk of severe disease or deaths once patients are infected by COVID-19. And in sports, the Philippine Sports Commission has suspended group practices of athletes in areas placed under enhanced community quarantine. In an advisory, the PSC encouraged national sports associations to practice online, individual training, and postpone all face-to-face -face training in Metro Manila, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, and Rizal. PSC Acting Deputy Executive Director Reina Evangelista called on the national athletes to follow precautionary measures of the Department of Health and the Interagency Task Force. The suspension affects those at the Inspire Sports Academy in Calamba, the combat sports fighters who are hoping to crack the national team for the Tokyo Olympics, and the Gilas Pilipinas Pool. Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas President Al Panlilio on Monday quickly called off the Gilas practice following the PSC advisory. On the other hand, the Games and Amusements Board has told professional athletes to have their own solo training. Here's another look at today's biggest stories. President Duterte allows the private sector to import their own supply of COVID-19 vaccines. The government is set to release 23 billion pesos in emergency subsidies for areas under the enhanced community quarantine. Pangasinan bans the entry and exit of travelers to and from the NCR Plus bubble. And about 14.5 million Filipinos with comorbidities will be next in line to receive COVID-19 vaccines. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day to all.